Okay, this video we're going to look at what are called absolute cell references. In the previous video, video we looked at relative cell references, and a relative cell reference is a formula where, let's check this one out here, uh, the B2 and the B4 are relative to B5. Those are the three cells above B5. And the default in Excel is, let me do a control C here and go paste it someplace else and do a control V, double click on it, and it is the three cells above this. So uh, that's the default in Excel. And I'm going to delete this right now by hitting the delete key. And um, sometimes you don't want that to be the default. And we're going to look at that in a minute. Before we do, I'm going to format this a little bit. Uh, we didn't have time to do formatting in the other video, so we'll do a little bit of formatting here. First of all, uh, let's take these column headings here. And actually, I'm going to add one more that we're going to use for our formulas today. I'm going to put the word percent there. And we're going to select all of these. And we're going to use some built-in styles. And we use heading three for all of those. Uh, over here, we're going to use some built-in styles. Underlines look funny on um, row headings, so heading four is what we'll use for that. Then I've got some numbers here. Uh, everything except column I is dollars and cents, so I'm going to format those as dollars and cents. That's called the currency. Uh, format. If you I'm sorry, the accounting format. If you pause the mouse over, it'll say accounting format. And with numbers this big, you don't usually look at the pennies, so I'm going to hit decrease decimal twice. And now I've just got whole numbers. But I do have dollar signs in. I've got commas in numbers that are a thousand or higher. Uh, one other formatting I'm going to do here is I'm going to select these totals down at the bottom. Uh, this one is obviously not total. And we're going to apply the total cell style to that and here's the total cell style and what it does is it makes everything bold and it goes to the default font which is Calibri 11 it makes it bold puts a single line above a double line below and uh, it that's the way you normally do totals is with a line above and a double line below and uh, it makes them bold by default so uh, they stand out a little more which is probably what you want Okay, so now we've got it looking good. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing here to make it look a little better. Um, numbers are right aligned, text is left aligned. This looks kind of funny. So let's try at least centering them. Uh, or you could right align them, whichever you think happens to look better. I'm going to go back and put them at the center of the column. Okay, now let's go to column J. And in column J, what I want to know is I want to know what percent of my budget I spent on each category. So what percent was on food, what was on rent, what was on miscellaneous. And I'm going to put those percents right here. Well, percent is just a fraction, so uh, my formula is going to be equals, and then I need to click on H2 or type in H2, uh, divided by, so do a slash, and then select the total down here in H5. So the formula is H2 divided by H5, it's just a fraction of the total, and that's exactly what I want. And so that's going to be about 27, almost 28 percent, and because this column says percent, we probably want to format it as a percent rather than as a ordinary decimal number and uh, that's what I want now let's go down here let's get our fill handle and let's copy this down to the other three cells and we get an error and when you get an error um, this little exclamation mark in a little yellow diamond is going to pop up and if you click on the down arrow uh, it will give you a little bit of help about you know what you did wrong and it's telling us that we're dividing by zero uh, there's also this help on this error option. If you click on that, I've never found this to be very helpful. Uh, it'll probably come up and tell you that you're trying to divide by zero, which you already know just by reading this. Uh, so I generally don't go to these. You can try them and see if you like them or not, but uh, I don't think they've been very useful. Okay, so we know we're doing wrong. Uh, we're dividing by zero, but why are we dividing by zero? Let's double click on this, and you see it is taking this number and dividing by this. There's no number there, so it treats that as a zero. Let's look at this one, and it's getting the top number right, the blue number, but the red number is down here. Let's double click on this one, and it's getting the top number right, but the bottom one is wrong. If you go back and look at the first number, or the first formula here, it says, remember these are relative cell references, so relative to this cell, I'm going over two to get the top number. Well, I want to do that every time. I want to go over two to get the top number. But the bottom number is always supposed to be B5. I'm sorry, H5. And if I copy this down, H5 becomes H6, and then H7, and then H8. And that's, let's take a look here. H6, H7, H8. 
I'm just double clicking and then hitting escape. Okay, so I want to tell Excel, uh, let's go back up here to our first uh, formula and double click on it. And I want to tell Excel not to change H5. And the way you do that is you put a dollar sign, I just double click there to edit. Put a dollar sign in front of the H, that means don't change the H. Put a dollar sign in front of the 5, that means don't change the 5. And now nothing changed here. But there was no problem with that formula in the beginning. But because I put those dollar signs in there, now when I copy the formula down, check it out. Now everything works. And if I double click on this, you see the H5 didn't move. Double click on this, the H5 didn't move. Double click on this. There is no pink number this time because both cell references are at H5, so H5 is gonna can only be one color, so it's blue, and so both of our references are blue. So if you ever have a term in a formula that you do not want to change when you copy it, make sure you put the dollar signs in. The dollar sign left the H means don't change the H. Dollar sign left the 5 means don't change the 5. Okay. Now let's go back up here. I'm going to delete these one more time. And I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to get rid of the dollar signs. And I'm going to show you a keyboard shortcut for putting your dollar signs in. Uh, after you click on the cell to get H5 to appear, or type in H5, if you hit function key F4, F4, press it once, it'll put the two dollar signs in for you. And that's a quick way to get the dollar signs in and make a cell reference absolute. Now I'm just going to hit the Enter key. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to select it with the fill handle and drag it down. And I add those numbers up and I get 100%. Now, let's take a look at something kind of interesting here. Let's go over to March and cell D4 and change the 275 that's there to the number 280 and hit enter. Okay. And that was just enough to change this percentage and make it 24%. Now, if you add these numbers up, you'll see 28 and 49 and 24 does not add up to 100%. It adds up to 101%. Okay, so what's going on? Well, what's going on is, uh, let me select these, and I'll select all of them. And let me go up here and increase the decimal places several times. Okay. And you'll see what happened is, you know, this number was 27 point something and it was m closer to 28 than it was to 27 so that gets rounded to 28. This gets rounded to 49, this gets rounded to 24 and so I end up rounding all of them up and so I'm adding these three up here and they actually add up to two but I'm adding one here, I'm adding one here, I'm adding one here, I'm adding in three and so it looks like Excel is adding incorrectly, but if I go back here and decrease my decimal places again, uh, and let's make our column a little smaller again too, um, these numbers look like they're adding up to more than 100%, but the underlying number that's there is actually, you know, that number that we looked at when we added all the, let me make this a little wider, we added all the decimal places. So it's not really 49%, it's really 48.6. This isn't really 28%, this isn't really 24%. Excel will always keep track of the actual value of the number, but we may not see the actual value of the number because it may be a long decimal like this, and somewhere along the way you're going to have to tell it to stop displaying decimal places, and when it does that it has to round off in the last decimal place. So if the last decimal place is the ones column, then you may end up being off by one when you get down here to the bottom, or maybe even more than that. But Excel is, this is the correct sum, and is the sum of these three numbers, but these numbers are not being displayed accurately because uh, we don't have any decimal places. Okay, So whenever you need a formula uh, that has a cell reference in it that you do not want to change when you copy it, you must put the dollar signs in, and the quick way to do that is press function key F4.